Welcome to Moves That Matter. I'm your host, Dr. Clyde Posley. Tonight, I want to spend our time together talking about fear and the importance of voting. I changed my format a bit tonight. I'm not coming in talking about my book. I'm not coming in setting up the segment. Tonight, this is the segment. Four years ago, when Hillary Clinton was the Democratic presidential candidate running against Donald Trump, it was proven that a mass campaign to create division among the African-American culture was unleashed by the Republican Party through Donald Trump at the now proven, according to the Mueller report, hand of Russia, that Russia actually helped the Republican Party to fight against Hillary Clinton and the Democratic Party. Those efforts were primarily focused on social media. As a result of many of those actions, there are people who were traditionally Democrats who began to buy into lies about Benghazi where there was no crime ever committed, began to buy into lies, people in the African-American culture and traditionally Democrats, <clears throat> Democrats bought into lies about Hillary Clinton's emails. No emails were ever found to be mistreated. There was no leaked information. Hillary Clinton was never charged with any crime and her case was officially closed. But the effort to sow discord among the African-American culture, particularly to dismantle and to create division in the Democratic Party, had done its work. And before we know it, knew it, a majority of people had voted against Donald Trump, but his damage in those delegate rich states, uh, cities, states like Florida, Michigan, Pennsylvania, had done their job. And before you knew it, you had people who knew better calling Hillary Clinton, Killary Clinton, and all sorts of buying into lies like that she was uh, molesting children in a pizza shop in Pennsylvania, all sorts of lies, all sorts of lies, lock her up. And all, and, and notwithstanding during this whole time, at least 30 people who helped that lock her up chant and helped Trump to be used of Russia to get in office have been federally indicted and locked up. All Republicans, not Democrats, Mike Flynn, Gates, Paul Manafort, all these people, even Donald Trump, has proven to have committed crimes, but because of his hand-picked Bill Barr as attorney general, can't be indicted while he's a president. In his, all these mistreating, all these lies have taken place. And then there is how Donald Trump frightened so many people, telling them that he's the only person that could bring order to the country, and that he's the only person that can help us. And as black as black people, how could we might as well vote for him? What do we have to lose? Four years later, how'd that work out for us? How did it work out for us that we made sure that we created division among black people and we fought Hillary Clinton and we fought everything and bought into the lies of Donald Trump and we let all his memes and all of his little crap go on? And before you know it, Donald Trump, the monster in chief was in charge. He was calling countries asshole nations. He's done that since he's been president. There are children still living in cages today because of Donald Trump's efforts to bring white nationalism to pass and to destroy Im uh, in any, any immigrants' lives. Donald Trump has slashed funding for the poorest schools through Na Nancy DeVos. Donald Trump. Has, has even hurt his own supporters in the Deep South in an effort to make sure that black blacks are, 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 are suppressed and white nationalism is increased. My question to you, the reason I'm talking to you in a more uh, intimate way tonight and not so much trying to teach, the reason that the camera is close to you and zooming in is because I'm trying to have a personal conversation with you to tell you that this is the most important presidential election in American history, particularly for African-Americans. 
We cannot sit back and allow these voter suppression actions keep us from casting our votes. We have to make sure that we galvanize behind efforts that are intelligent and wise to get this type of mindset that uh, could one housed by Donald Trump out of office. There was a time that I, I thought in, in, my, in my efforts to make, uh, to try to find what th the most viable path to removing Donald Trump's mindset from office, uh, trying to find that path, I thought it might be uh, Bloomberg. At no time was in any of my thoughts and my th uh, questions about whether it was Bloomberg who was designed to get Donald Trump out of office, at no time did I ever um, believe that stop and frisk was right or his, his, or his uh, efforts to, uh, to try to keep the uh, Central Park Five from re receiving their uh, entitlement uh, money uh, after they were exonerated. At no time did I think that was right. At no time did I ever say uh, that I believed that uh, Bloomberg was a good guy, a great guy. What I believed that he was, was that he, at that time, because it seemed that uh, Joe Biden was, fa was fading in the polls, I believe that Bloomberg might be our best chance to get Donald Trump out of office. I no longer believe that. And and uh, even before this broadcast, Bloomberg has resigned in, uh, his, his presidential campaign and committed his efforts to helping Joe Biden. I want to officially say I'm committed to the Democratic Party and helping Joe Biden become our next president because I believe he has the best chance to move, remove Donald Trump from office. I also believe that Donald Trump believes Joe Biden has the best chance to remove him from office. Donald Trump risked his entire presidential uh, administration over trying to trump up some lies against Donald Trump's, um, against uh, Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, when he knew they were lies. He knew the whole Ukraine process was a lie. There was nothing that's been repeatedly investigated and nothing has been found that Joe Biden has done, uh, uh, and, and nor his son, Hunter. Why would Donald Trump risk his entire career over trying to fight one presidential candidate? Because he is afraid and he knows that that candidate is a, is, is a better candidate for president than he ever would be. I want to say this today. We need to come together as a culture. I'm speaking to you as a pastor for officially over 30 years. I'm not a novice. I'm not someone who is new. I'm not someone who is new to politi politics. I'm not someone who is new uh, to p political circles, and I'm not someone who is new to helping the Democratic Party with elections. I participate in politics at the state, uh, local, and national level. I am committed to, I'm, I am a pastor who preaches uh, politics, uh, 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 theology, as well as social justice issues, all in tandem from my pulpit. I teach my kids to do the same. There, I have 60, over 60 sons and daughters in the ministry and seven, uh, eight of them are pastors. I speak to them in the same way. So I think at some levels I have some right to speak boldly and to speak as a, lay, a leader or a bishop and overseer to pastors and other leaders. Let me look you in the eye and tell you, this is not a plaything. We need to stop with the memes and stop with the jokes and stop with trying to stoke fear in people. We need to stop trying to use the escalated murder rate to try to make people afraid into blaming politicians for our problems. Can I tell you something? Christ, commitment, and collaboration are the answers to our problems. Christ, committed people, and those willing to collaborate and bring all their resources are the answers to our problems. I need you to understand something today. There is nothing too hard for God. I can tell you this, despite the things you have heard about the evangelical church and, all, and how that Donald Trump is God's will, let me be clear with you. Donald Trump is not God's will for America. Donald Trump, no person who seeks to oppress another one is doing it at the hand of God. No person who seeks to perpetuate poverty among people is doing that at the hand of God, with the help of God. No person 
who is okay with publicly bragging about and getting away with sleeping with a porn star is doing that led by the Holy Spirit. And God is not directing any pastor, any pastor, black, white, or any color, to substantiate, collaborate, or endorse the behavior of Donald Trump. We need to make some serious decisions. We need to ask ourselves, do we have common sense? Or do we have corrupted sense? Do we have the sense? Do we have a conscience that tells us what is right and wrong? Or have we become so culturally committed and so whitewashed in our thinking that we don't even have a moral center any longer? The revival that this city needs, I agree with Dr. William Barber III. We need a moral revival. We need to get back to what is right and what is wrong above what our IRAs say, above what I, what the stock market says. Because in the same way that the stock market is flourishing, somebody knows that same stock market can bow out and bring devastation. Don't put your hope in Donald Trump. Don't put your hope in, in Joe Biden. Don't put your hope in anything but the power of God to grace doing the right thing. If you do what you know to be the right thing to do, then God will take care of the rest. A little note I want to give also about the whole, the Bloomberg, some blacks who had supported Bloomberg uh, uh, trying to remove Donald Trump. I'm going to give you a principle, something I never want you to forget. You can never do your best work in the world while you hold grudges. What Bloomberg did 30 years ago that he said was wrong, it was wrong. Stop and frisk was not a good policy. It's not, it wasn't good then. It's not a good policy now. And several other things that Donald that uh, uh, Bloomberg did were absolutely wrong. But I cannot expect the help of God to flow firmly and, and, and right toward me while I, do grud- while I hold on to hatred and grudges. You cannot be a black person that spends your life hating white people for things that have been done for years and things that are still being done today and call yourself a person who's living for the kingdom of God. There is no grudge in the kingdom. I'm not saying to skip over something. I'm not saying to forget what people have done. I'm simply saying that you cannot spend your life hating someone and ask God to help you to hate somebody. He's not going to do it. Romans chapter 12, God says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord, and I will repay. He says, uh, uh, forgive your enemies. Do good to them that despitefully use you. What does that mean? Because Christ came here and died on the cross. And at that time, all persons were sinners and everybody was his enemy. All sin, sin is an enemy to God. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, he had no truth. Every friend he had, every person he knew, all of his disciples were all sinners. And God hates sin. You, we cannot expect to move forward as a country into a better space and time for our uh, America as long as we hate people. Posey, you a sellout, man. You're not, no, I'm not a sellout. And if you know me at all, you just, you just insulted me to even think that. I'm as black as they come. I understand the plight of blackness. I have had, I, I have, I, going into my school at school 62 in elementary, there were people screaming, spitting, throwing, swinging bats at us, not wanting. I'm going into a school seven years old, and I understand. It has burned in my heart. It has pushed and propelled my efforts to make uh, uh, social justice strides for our country. But it has never gotten in the way of the fact that love is the most powerful force in the universe. And hating people does not help me secure the help of God in my life. What have I talked about today? Let's get serious about voting. What have I talked about today? Let's learn to forgive. What have I talked about today? Don't fall for the fear, okie doke. This coronavirus is going on, for example. You got people panicking, uh, incident uh, uh, conferences being canceled all around the world. You got people want, w- w- making you want to run, panic. You don't want to shake anybody's hand, all that. Can I tell you something? God, yes, you need to be wise, and yes, you need to take precautions. 
But God, according to 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, God does not give the spirit of fear, but of, a, but of power and a sound mind. God doesn't, God, does, God doesn't operate by fear. When Donald Trump is trying to frighten you and make you think and this, that, and other things, listen, God doesn't operate by fear. Stop allowing yourself to be tricked into doing anything because of fear. Faith is why you, how you proceed. And faith is looking for truth to put itself in. So, last thing I want to say to you, and I'm going to be done. We have a, this is a critical hour in America. Critical time. Stop playing and get serious. Make the blood that was shed on the Edmund Prairie's bridge mean something. Make the knots and the welts and the bruises that John, uh, that, 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 that the marchers on the Edmund Prairie's uh, bridge endured, the rocks that they had to suffer. Listen to me. The, the, the brutal evil and, and, and degradation that black people endured in Alabama. Listen, make your vote matter. Martin Luther King ended the speech once by saying, if you just give us the vote, we'll right the wrongs that have been so real over our history. Just, just give us the vote. We will make ourselves uh, legislation and leadership that can serve not only our culture, but other cultures. If you just give us the vote, we will show you how we would like to see our cultures and our communities shaped. Give us the vote. We will show you what our schools need to look like in order for us to be a viable component of society that, that brings its creativity uh, as it has historically brought it to bless America and the world. Give us the vote and we will make sure that our kids get lunches. Give us the vote. We'll make sure that, that school drivers receive adequate wages and benefits and don't have to resort to tactics that are questionable in order to accomplish or have their voices heard. Give us the vote and we will make sure that the injustices that have controlled our world thus far are no more if you only give us the vote. And can I tell you one last thing? Voter suppression exists because of the reality I just said. The only reason any anybody would ever try to stop you from voting is they know the power of the vote. Get yourself in a position to vote. Let's do better so all ships can rise together. I'm your host, Dr. Clyde Posley, a new voice to a, a digital voice to a new generation. Let's get serious. This vote is real. Stop playing about politics and let's get serious. God bless you. I'll talk to you soon.